Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I got a video breaking down the um, new info on the next update and um, a lot of you guys probably clicked on this video to hear my opinion on the Kyo Perico nerf and the KDR, um, uh, the KDR changes and a few other changes, some massive changes that are coming in this update. Um, and as you guys probably have assumed, I'm not happy about this. I don't think the Kyo Perico changes are good, and I'm going to explain why, and I'm going to explain my reasoning for it. Um, but anyways, uh, let's react to this. Upcoming improvements to the GTA Online experience coming as part of the Criminal uh, on Enterprises on July 26, alongside a host of new gameplay additions, a fleet of new vehicles, and much more to come next week and the weeks to follow GTA Online. The Criminal Enterprises will implement a significant number of overall e experience improvements, including many requested by players via the GTA Online feedback page yeah because gta online players gave you feedback to nerf kyo perico right rockstar thanks in no small part to this very vast resource from our community we have a wide range of improvements and upgrades to the overall experience of gta online for all current platforms including the latest generation of consoles business protections and upgrades Starting July 26, players will be able to engage in business activities including cell missions in private invite-only sessions. You'll be able to register as a VIP, CEO, or MC president in invite-only crew and friend sessions, allowing business owners to source and sell at their own pace or with their friends. Players on all platforms can easily find a new session by bringing up the pause menu, selecting online, and find new sessions. Players can also continue to sell their goods in public sessions, and those who do so will receive an increased high demand bonus for their efforts. When they say increased high demand bonus, the high demand bonus is basically like the 1% bonus. So how it basically works is whatever you are selling, you get 1% um, of that um, of that uh, of that sell back. So let's say, for instance, you're just selling a business worth a million dollars. Let's just say whatever you're selling is worth a million dollars, right? How the high demand bonus basically works is that it's 1% bonus for each player not in your MC or CEO. So for other players, they can be your friends, but as long as they're not in your MC or your CEO, you get that 1% bonus. And this stacks up to 25%. So if you find like a full 30 player lobby, um, let's say that you have, you know, um, uh, four people in your um, uh, in your uh, CEO, you're selling something worth a million dollars, right? Well, um, that bonus is only going to stack up to 25 players, not to 26. So instead of getting a million um, dollars back, you will get a million 250,000. So you get a $10,000 bonus per player. So people look at this and they think that like 1% per player isn't that much, but if you sell this in like a 30 player lobby, this really stacks up up to 25%. Um, and so I've always did that. Um, I've always sold really in public lobbies, but when they say increased, you know, high demand bonus, maybe they'll actually increase it even more. You know, that'd be a nice thing there too. Um, so for people that keep selling in public lobbies, maybe they'll make a little bit more. Um, I do think this is definitely a good step in the right direction, being able to sell an invite and friend sessions. I think this is going to reduce the griefing so much on GTA Online. So this, all this news isn't terrible, but we're going to get to the bad news in a little bit here. Um, let's see. Vehicle customization enhancements and changes. In addition to the fleet of new vehicles set to arrive this July and across the summer and fall, we've made some changes to address a number of submissions from our gearheads, LS car meet members, automotive enthusiasts, and beyond, including all vehicles with access to the LS car meet will be able to, will be equipped with low grip tires, giving players even more customization options and modifying vehicles at the LS car meet. Vehicles will be delivered faster when requesting from the mechanic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes it takes too long when you call the mechanic. Players will uh, uh, no longer longer incur a charge for destroying another player's weaponized personal vehicle, avoiding penalties for those who return fire and successfully neutralize attackers. Okay, good. I'm getting so sick of blowing up oppressors and other vehicles and having to pay for it. Um, and I and I don't even, you know, care really about the money, you know, that person, because I have, you know, millions of dollars. You know, I have a new character and I, you know, have nearly $50 million, but what pisses me off is that I, I hate that I get bad sport points. I've never been in a bad sport lobby, but I've been really close to being put in bad sport lobbies because this amount of weaponized vehicles I, I blow up and they're attacking me. Um, the Avenger and Mobile Operations Center Vehicle Workshop will accommodate any vehicle that can fit as opposed to only select vehicles excluding the Oppressor Mark II, uh, which is uh, modified via its own workshop inside the Terabyte. Avenger Mobile Operations Center. I always I always wish that you could put a motorcycle inside the terabyte, but you can only put a Mark II, but they're talking about Avenger and Mobile Operations Center here. The number of avail ownable properties will be increased from 8 to 10, increasing total garage space. Okay, yeah, good thing. Legendary Motorsport and Southern San Andreas websites will feature new filters and browsing shortcuts. Okay. Um, plus, the effectiveness of the homing missiles on the Pegasi Oppressor Mark II have been reduced, and its countermeasures will have increased cooldowns and fewer uses. We don't know exactly what this means. The um, uh, homing missiles on the Oppressor Mark II have been reduced. 
This is very vague. We still don't know exactly what this means. But like I said, the this basically they might make the Oppressor Mark II missiles buzzard missiles. That's basically what they might make them. Um, uh, but my solution to the Oppressor Mark II, it's like I've said for some time, my solution to the Mark II is make it so that it can lock onto cops and NPCs but it cannot lock onto player vehicles. If you do that, people can still use it for grinding, even though I hate that thing. I hate that stupid oppressor mark too. I wish it wasn't in the game. If you make it so that it can lock onto NPCs and cops, people, some, the people who use it for grinding can still use it for grinding, uh, grinding. And meanwhile, people, if people want to kill other people with the oppressor mark too, it's going to take a lot more skill to have to manually aim the missiles. Um, and let's see, um, uh, the Sparrow helicopter will have chaff and flare countermeasures available when being modified inside the Kasatka to make it uh, less vulnerable to enemy fire. As with all the other other areas of GT Online, we'll continue to monitor player feedback on this change and how it impacts the streets of Los Santos. Okay, this is a good thing. Um, the Sparrow, I... I, I I get locked onto so many times in my Sparrow, I'm just trying to do like heist prep missions or I'm trying to do something else with my Sparrow and it gets locked onto. Um, it's very frustrating, very annoying, um, uh, so having chaff and flares on it, I definitely think that that's a step in the right direction. Um, and it's all annoying, your helicopter gets blown up, you gotta wait two minutes for it. Um, so take a look at this picture right here. Um, circle drop ammo, triangle drop weapon, eat a snack or use armor. Okay, this is, you know, this is good. This is gonna help in combat, you don't have to pull up the menu every time you do the missions. General improvements. Whether assisting Franklin in his recovery of Dr. Dre's missing music or partying in the music locker, visiting El Rubio's tropical uh, haven, or simply wrecking havoc with friends across the city's player, uh, players across Southern San Andreas can look forward to a slew of new highly requested improvements arriving in July 26. Yeah, because the players really did request the Cayo Perico nerf. When delivering security contracts back to the agency, players will be able to enter via helicopter or walk in through the entrance on the roof rather than needing to go through the door at the ground level. Good. That's a good thing too. When you're, you know, flying back to the um, uh, the agency, you don't have to constantly go through the front door, land the helicopter on the ground. You can land it on the roof. When managing an auto shop business, your auto shop staff will now be much more likely to successfully deliver a customer's vehicle without issue. Good. To make getting around certain locations easier, players will be able to jog inside the Diamond Casino Resort, the music locker, and the nightclub. Good also. It's just so annoying when you gotta walk through your nightclub all the way to the office around, or when you're, you, you gotta walk through the um, casino. So get, getting around it faster is gonna be good. Players will be able to purchase max ammo for all weapons at once in the interaction menu. Players will also have easier access to snacks and armor through a single input while the weapon wheel is up. Plus, if a player fails and quick restarts a mission, snacks will be restocked to however many they started when the they started the mission with. Okay, good. So now when, when you have somebody that keeps dying on heists and they restart, at least they'll get their snacks back. So that's, that's I think, a step in the right direction. Players will now be able to immediately hang up on phone calls from several contacts when they offer missions rather than be forced to listen to the full call before they can hang up. Good. I can't count the amount of times um, English Dave, hey, it's Davey boy. Like, oh my God, that's so annoying. Like a second I, I log into GT Online, it's Davey boy in that long call. You can always end it by pressing start, um, but it's just such an annoying call. Um, uh, PC players will have the option to disable the in-game chat box via the settings menu. To reduce instances of griefing, the kill death statistic will no longer be affected by kills made in free mode. Going forward, this ratio will only be affected by kills scored in um, competitive gameplay. Okay, ooh. The kills death statistic. Now I'm assuming this means kill death ratio, and I really hope this applies to scorecards as well. I really hope they get rid of the scorecards and the KD um, entirely in free mode. I think this is a step in the right direction. Some people might argue with me, but I think that this is definitely a step in the right direction, and I definitely think it's good. And I, you know, I, I've heard from so many people. They say I don't care about kill death ratio. I only care about scorecards. Yet the people that the people that care about scorecards almost always have really high kill death ratios. And the, and whenever you know you do encounter these crazy people in like um, uh, these crazy people that attack you and constantly want a PvP battle in free mode, they almost always have really super high KDs. Like I've seen people with over a hundred KD and that is technically possible. If you make a new character and you almost never die and you constantly easy way out and you just keep killing people and then never let them kill you, yeah you can even raise your KD that high but it's still stupid. And so I never thought that like in a GTA game people would care about kill death ratio. I thought that was something exclusive to a game like Call of Duty but apparently that, that garbage has spread to GTA online. But um, uh, anyways, about it is, you know, KD really has no place, in my opinion, in like a GTA game. It's just stupid. KD, I've, and I've always said, I've said this before, if you want to have KD, have it in competitive modes, like deathmatch, team deathmatch, because then it would actually matter. It would actually show who's getting the most kills and who's doing the best. But when you have it in something like free mode, free mode is so subjective, because basically having a high KD in free mode takes no skill. 
No skill. I don't care what people argue with me on. It takes no skill to have a high KD in free mode. Now, people are going to say, oh, come on, how? How doesn't it not take no skill? I'll tell you why. Because there might be one player that, that, is, that is actually good at the game. He's good at PvP, and he has a really high KD. But then there's another player that might be terrible at PvP, but he has the exact same high KD. But how is that possible? If the other guy's terrible, how does he have the, high, the same KD as a player that's actually good at the game? The reason the terrible player has a high KD is because of cheap tactics. That's precisely the reason. All people need to do, I'll tell you what they need to do. All they need to do is ghost ghost organization. They're off the map for three minutes. Go into a 30 player lobby. Nobody knows when you're going to attack them. Use the oppressor mark to blow up a bunch of people. And then when they're about to kill you, just teleport back to your um, uh, apartment with a heist invite. And then go back into your garage, get a night shark or an Imani vehicle, drive around, blow people up going off radar. And then they're, the second they're about to kill you, teleport back to your apartment with a heist invite. And then, and then when you're about to die, constantly easy way out because when you blow yourself up in GT Online, it does not count towards scorecards. It doesn't count towards KD. It only counts when another player kills you. So that, that I've seen so many players do that. I've seen so many people do that where they go off the radar, blow somebody up, and then the second you're about to kill them, they either constantly easy way out or they just teleport back to their apartment with a heist invite. And, and that's how they raise their KD so high. That takes no skill. It takes no skill to do ghost organization, go off the radar, blow somebody up, and then teleport back to your apartment with a heist invite. And people keep doing that to raise their KD. I have seen people do this. It's a real problem. If you are watching this video, chances are you've probably encountered one of these idiots that I'm talking about, where they'll, they'll attack you, and the second you're about to kill them, they just teleport right back to their apartment with a heist invite. People do that all the time. It's so frustrating. And the worst part about this, the worst part about this isn't even people getting their KDs really high. The worst part about this is that people actually think this takes skill. They think this takes skill going off the radar with an oppressor mark two and then teleporting back to your apartment with a heist invite. They actually think they're good at the game when they do something like that. That's the wor literally the worst part about that. So that's what I think. And uh, and if it was up to me, I think scorecards would be should be taken out of free mode. Also, I think they literally I I think they should be taken out of free mode. Also, if you want to keep scorecards in. Keep them in 1v1 deathmatches. If somebody wants to start a 1v1 deathmatch and go to the beach, that's where all the you know players typically do their 1v1 deathmatches, then keep it there. You know, if they challenge each other, they can invite another player to a 1v1 deathmatch and they can keep their scorecards there. But scorecards should not exist between player random players. Like somebody just attacks you, blows you up for no reason, and then they have like a 1-0 scorecard. I can't count the amount of times where I, I have fought players where all what they do is they fire an RPG at you. So they'll fire an RPG or a homing launcher at you, and then the second they fire it, they just blow themselves up with a sticky bomb, the easy way out. So they fire an RPG right in your direction, and then you don't even have a chance to return fire because they blow themselves up. And then if that RPG or homing missile hits you, these idiots will oftentimes message you saying, 1-0, 1-0, I owned you, I got you, um, uh, I win, I'm a better player than you. It is so stupid. The 1-0 thing, is, it, it, it's not even a parody. I know there's people that troll about it, don't get me wrong, but there are people that honestly believe in the one -0 crap. The one oh crap is somebody kills somebody once, gets that one kill on the scorecard, and then they somehow think that they're better than that person. It's so toxic and it's so garbage. So if they take scorecards out of free mode, I'll, I'll actually be happy with that. Like I said, if you support keeping scorecards in, then I have no problem with that, keeping that in 1v1 death matches. You can play it in free mode. You want to invite somebody to a 1v1 death match, you should have that option. They accept the invite. You go to the beach, wherever else you want to fight, and then you both have scorecards. But it should not be between random players where somebody just attacks somebody, scorecards appear. I don't like that. Um, personally. That's just my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me, but that's just my personal experience of PvP and GT Online. That's that's why I don't like it and why I think PvP is so unbalanced in this game. Um, but anyways, that's you know enough of me talking about KD here. Let's read um here. After their initial visit, players will be able to spend more time scoping out Cayo Perico and can get caught more times before being kicked off. Okay, a good thing. Race Creator will be getting an assortment of updates in including increases to the checkpoint limit, player limit for transform races, number of fixtures that can be removed from the latest generation of consoles. Plus, all platforms will now be able to create RC Bandito um, races via the special vehicle race. Okay, um, uh, more models have also been added to fixture removal along with the new anti-grief ghosting option to ghost players driving in the wrong direction. Okay, that's actually good because so many people crash into each other, but I wish more players would honestly, um, uh, they would honestly, um, what's, what's the thing called? It's the um, non-contact. I wish more players would host non-contact races, because when it's a non-contact race, a lot of times people will just crash into each other, and it's whoever got lucky and didn't get crashed into oftentimes wins first place. Um, 
payout increases. Okay, looks like we got some good things here, so we're not all negative. The criminal uh, enterprises will also include increased GTA payouts across a number of activities in GTA Online, giving both new and veteran um, players greater freedom to play the, the content they enjoy the most and get what they want faster. Changes to these payouts will, of course, combine and stack over our ongoing weekly bonuses, meaning even bigger payouts going forward for taking part in your favorite game modes during special events. Races, GTA Online's racing community will benefit from a significant increase in the GTA um, payouts across the board. With the launch of GTA Online and Criminal Enterprise, all standard race types, including player created races, will pay out an average of 50% more GTA. I mean, this is better than nothing, but I honestly think that races should pay double or triple what they're paying right now, because I think they pay too little. I honestly do. Because if you, you the thing is, when you try to connect to a race, you can almost never connect into a race. It takes way too long. Like, and the thing is, though, I actually tried to test it. I tried to test it and see, like, how long it would take randoms to join me. So what I would do is I would appear offline so that my friends, because whenever I invite my friends, my friends join, I can fill up um, a race, but that's because I'm a YouTuber. If you're an average player on this game, you cannot fill up a lobby like I can. And so what I've done in the past, I've, I've appeared offline and I've tried to just auto-invite people just to see how long it takes. And I've been sitting in these lobbies for minutes, minutes, and then maybe I'll get like three, four people max to do a race with. I can never fill up a lobby on my own, almost never, um, uh, when I'm appearing offline. And that's, you know, what the average player goes through on this game. And uh, so I, if you actually increase the payouts to, to, you know, double, triple, I think you'd have way more people playing these races. The total prize pool for premium races will also be increased. These races will continue to award the same payouts to podium finishers, while players placing fourth and below will now also receive payouts. Adversary modes. Payouts for all adversary modes currently available in GTA Online will be boosted by an average of 50%, meaning players can earn extra GTA money taking on uh, opponents in unique mo modes like Sumo, um, Remix, Overtime, Rumble, and many more. Okay, so 50% more money um, uh, uh, on adversary modes is better than nothing, but I think it should also be double or triple. Same thing with the adversary modes, barely anyone plays them. Um, to encourage group uh, play, all players joining high setups will receive 50% more GTA money than the current payout. Additionally, the minimum cut for finales is now set at 15% for each member. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing because it's. It, I, I get where they're coming with this. They don't want people to, to you know, hit, give somebody 0%, but if you give somebody 0%, they're going to leave either way. There are some people that want to help their friends with a heist. So I've done this in the past where I've actually helped my friends with a heist. I've joined my friend's heist and I tell my friends, give me 0%. I don't want anything. I just want to help you. And I help them get, you know, more money doing this. You know, we've we done this on, you know, Pacific Standard on the other heist. So I have joined in heist helping people out and I take a 0% cut and that's just me because I give it to my friends because, or if I'm hosting the heist, you know, I, I'll give myself 0% and just give the rest to my friends because I, I don't really need it. And so I want to help my friends. So giving people 0%, actually, there is a reason for that. There is a specific reason for that. Some, some, some people don't want anything. Some people just want to help their friends out. So I don't know about that. It's, I guess it's to prevent people from, you know, getting nothing. But at the same time is I don't, I don't know. Um, but, uh, what 50% more than the GTA payout, I'd, I, 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 I will, we'll read all of these. The cost of the setup has been reduced across the board to GTA 25,000. Okay. Following heist finales were reduced, award an additional 75%. Fleece a job. Humane Labs Raid, Prison Break Finale, Series A funding, 75%. I honestly think it should be doubled or tripled on these heists. Like, Prison Break, okay, this one, for instance. Prison, what, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, what is the final payout on the Prison Break? It's like 200, 250,000, and it's like split between the players. It's like, it's terrible. Um, uh, so, what I'll say about the Prison Break is that the Prison Break, you need people that know what they're doing. And I don't mind having a heist where you have to have teamwork, but you have to have people that know what they're doing. You have to have three other people that know what they're doing. If you don't have one person that knows what they're doing, you're going to mess up the whole heist. And the prison break is so unforgiving. If you mess up at any point during the prison break, you have to start all the way through that giant shootout fighting like those 100 SWAT team members going through the prison. So if anybody messes up, plane crashes, demolition dies, prison officer dies, prisoner dies, you gotta restart all over again, get in the plane, uh, get in the car, drive to the airport, uh, airstrip, get picked up in the plane, escape. So it's just a, such an unforgiving heist. So I don't think that 75% is appropriate. I think it should be, you know, doubled or tripled personally for that. Um, and where, where is Pacific Standard? The following heist finales will receive an award 50% more. Pacific Standard job finale... Uh, I think, I think Pacific Standard, I think honestly Pacific Standard should be doubled or tripled as well, because think about it this way, with the casino heist, you don't put that much effort into casino heist preps and Cayo Perico preps as you do in the Pacific Standard. Pacific Standard, you need literally four people to do these, um, setup missions in, 
And so time is money when you really think about it, because instead of doing Pacific Standard, you could just be doing Casino Heist or Cayo Perico Heist instead. And so uh, Pacific, Pacific Standard, I'm trying to remember the payout on Pacific Standard. What is the payout at the end? The Was it a million dollars? Man, I haven't played Pacific Standard in like years, so it's like, I, I'm trying to remember, but it was the best paying heist out of the five original ones, but it still doesn't match. Like, you have to split it between the, you know, the four other people, so it doesn't match what you would get normally. So I think that, yeah, I think it should be doubled or triple. And Doomsday Heist, Doomsday Heist, I never want to do these at heists again because the Doomsday Heist have some of the most annoying missions in the game. The most annoying. Uh, there's that. There's that really. There's that one really bad mission in. Um, I think it's Doomsday Heist Act Three. There's that. There's two really bad missions. There's a mission where you have to protect Agent Fourteen from the Juggernauts. That mission just sucks. And then there's that other mission where you have to protect ULP when he's driving this the the Havoc helicopter, which is technically a fast helicopter. He's going so slow on the highway, and you have to protect him from like a hundred Valkyrie helicopters. That mission sucks. So Doomsday Heist. I guess it's good that it's getting a pay increase, but I just hate the Doomsday Heist missions personally. If you like them, that's fine. But just my personal opinion. I'm just stating it. I don't like the Doomsday Heist. Um, Okay, this is this is the worst part right now. With this update, all heists will be aligned to have the same cooldown timer of one in-game day, 48 minutes when playing as a group. We will also adjust specific aspects of the Kyle Perico heist finale to better balance a player's time spent in GTA Online. Solo playthroughs of the Kyle Perico heist will trigger a cooldown of three in-game days. Oh my god, this is the worst part of the newswire. Um, uh, this is like, you know, you take a step back, step forward, and then you take a step back. That's pretty much like what this is. You get some good information, but then it's ruined with just this new bad information. Um, uh, basically, an in-game day is 48 minutes, as it says here. So it says that all heists will have a cooldown time of 48 minutes. So every... Every heist you can't do for 40 minutes. So that means if you have a casino heist, well, you have to wait for a coyote, uh, you have to wait, um, uh... You have to you have to basically do all the preps again. So does that mean you wait? Does that mean you can't start doing the preps for the Cayo Perico heist in like 48 minutes? Is that what it means, or you can't do the finale? I'm a little confused on what that means exactly. But like, what if you have a casino heist and a Cayo heist, and you finish the Cayo heist? What you can't do the casino heist now? Now there's a 48 minute cooldown. Why? Who asked for this? Why? The, you, you, you can't tell me that players asked you this in the, in the feedback. People said, yeah, Rockstar, we want a feedback. We we want 48 minutes. 48 minute cooldown on the heist. That's what we want on the feedback page. Rockstar's like, okay, we'll listen to the community. You cannot tell me that the community wanted something like this. This is this is just nonsense. Yeah, we're listening to the community. There's no way people ask for this. Um, uh, we will also adjust specific aspects of the Cayo Perico heist finale to better balance the player's time spent in GTA Online. Solo playthroughs of the Cayo Perico heist finale will trigger a th or trigger a cooldown of three in-game days. Oh my God! With 48 minutes. Let me, let me count this. 40, 80, 120, 120, uh, 128, 136, 142. It's 142 minutes. 142 minutes is close to two and a half hours. So basically, if you do the, uh, the Cayo Perico heist solo, you have to wait two and a half hours to do it again? Are you kidding me? Seriously? And, uh, and, and, and it gets worse. And after stealing a high-value primary target in the Cayo Perico heist finale, the higher-value primary targets will appear less often for the next 72 hours. Seriously, so you're gonna get you're gonna get worse items, while the value of the secondary targets will increase. What does that mean with secondary secondary targets? I know I know what they're getting at. They're getting at like the coke, the weed, the cash, and the gold and the artwork. But does that mean that we're gonna have gold in like the regular world? That it's not just gonna be in like Rubio's compound. That you're actually gonna be able to steal gold in like um, some of the gates that you can access solo. Is that what's gonna be the, the the case? This is intended to encourage exploration and cooperation between players. Okay, this is stupid. This, I'm gonna, this is this is just dumb. This is stupid. Now look. The, the ridiculous thing is, there are some people that are defending this right now. I'm telling you this right now. I'm going to call it. I, I, I haven't seen much about this, but I'm going to tell you. I know there's people defending this 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 paragraph right here. There are people, because the thing is, when Cayo Perico Heist first came out, there was people that were actually complaining about it, and they were saying that Cayo Perico should get nerfed because now people don't want to do any, any of the other activities in the game. That was stupid logic for me. I thought Cayo Perico was honestly the best DLC in the game because it gave you a heist that you can make a lot of money from, added a whole new map, and you can do it solo. That's why I think Cayo Perico is personally the best, um, uh, the best uh, DLC in my opinion in the game. But the thing is, though, for the people that were complaining that Cayo Perico ruins the other activities in the game, the solution to that is not to nerf Cayo Perico. The solution to that is to increase the payouts on everything else. When you increase the payouts on everything else, when you increase payouts on businesses and other activities, then 
people will do that alongside Cayo Perico. But if Cayo Perico is the main moneymaker and then the other businesses don't make as much, of course people are going to do Cayo Perico much more. So the solution is not to nerf Cayo Perico. The solution is to increase payouts on all the other activities. That is the solution. Um, but this is this is just stupid. And it's to encourage exploration and cooperation between players. And oh my god. Th th and the thing is though, one of the reasons I like doing Cayo Perico high solo one of the main reasons I like doing it solo is because I can I know where all the enemies are and I can stealth it perfect. I can do it quietly, no problem. And I wasn't one of those people that always did like great. I would I would do solo, I would find the cocaine, I would oftentimes take the disguise, I would take the truck and sometimes I would even use the you know the plane. I would parachute like right outside the combat. I know that took the heist a little bit longer, but I liked the variety in it. So I wasn't, you know, one of those people that constantly did the great, um, uh, the, the sewer, you know, uh, great entrance. Um, but the, one of the reasons I don't like playing with, like, a team of four, I, I don't mind playing with, like, one other person, like, teams of two. But the reason I don't like playing with teams of four is because the more people you have, the chances you are of getting spotted. And then when you get spotted in the Cayo Perico heist, it just gets so much harder to shooting you, the bags lose money. So that, that's, that's, that's what I personally, um, uh, that's what I personally don't like. But, like, what I'll tell you is, what they can do to increase cooperation between players and to make the heist more diverse, what if Pavel, for instance, texts you and tells you, hey, um, you know, boss or something like that, if we take a disguise and we go through, like, you know, the, the um, gate with the truck or something like that, we get an extra $200,000 during the heist. Or, you know, or if we take, like, the, um, if we scale the walls with, with the rope, we get an extra two hundred thousand dollars. Like Pablo would tell you, if you take, if you do this approach on this day, you'll get a little bit more. That would encourage people to do different approaches when when going through the heist. Not like this, where you're just you're nerfing what the main target is going to be on the heist, and you're also reducing the cooldowns now on, on three end game days, which is basically two and a half hours. You know who asked for this? Who asked for this? Cayo Perico does not need a nerf. This is just dumb. And also. <clears throat> Sorry, I was losing my voice here because I'm just getting really annoyed with this. What I will also say to this, and I want to be clear on this when I say this, what I'm about to say right now, I am not attacking GTA fans. I'm a GTA fan. Most people that are watching this are GTA fans. I'm not attacking GTA fans. I'm instead, I'm criticizing the GTA fanboys. There's a difference between a fanboy and a, um, a fan. A fan is somebody like, like me and you that just likes GTA. You know, a, a fanboy is somebody that, that is obsessed with GTA Online and they will defend Rockstar's stupid decisions, no matter what. Like, they'll defend this, they will defend GTA Plus, they'll defend Rockstar canceling Red Dead Online. Um, uh, they'll say it's good for business. So now I would redirect this to, to, the, to the fanboys, the GTA Online fanboys that kept saying that Rockstar abandoning Red Dead Online is good for business. They said, oh, you know, Red Dead Online doesn't make as much money as GTA Online. It's good that we abandoned it. It's good, it's good that Rockstar abandoned it. It's good for business. That makes them more money. Well, now, could Red Dead players say the same thing to you? Could Red Dead players say that Rockstar nerfing Cayo Perico is a good business decision? It's going to sell them more shark cards. Could Red Dead Online players say that to G the GTA Online fanboys now? I guarantee you if they said that, the GTA Online fanboys would be raging if that. So that's the same logic when they constantly use that stupid uh, argument saying, oh, you know, it's good for business. Red Dead Online got a and that's that same logic back in their face. You could argue GTA Plus is a good business decision. You could argue this is a good business decision because it's going to sell them more shark cards. But that's why, you know, not everything is about money. As a developer, you have to have respect for your fans and you have to listen to your community also. And your community did not ask for this. Your community did not ask for GTA Plus and your community did not ask you to abandon Red Dead Online. But, you know, Rockstar is just going so crazy with the money right now, it's not the same developer anymore. But like I said, that same stu stupid business, business argument that they make, you could bring that back into this, and I have a documentary coming out on that where I'm going to be talking about how that whole business argument is wrong. But this is just this basically just you know reassures my point is that you could argue that this is a good business decision when they argue that Red Dead Online being screwed is a good business decision. You could argue that, and I don't believe I don't agree with that. Don't get me wrong. I think this is stupid. I think this is just corporate greed. I think this is just a way for them to sell sell more shark cards. That's honestly why because people are doing the um uh, people are doing Cayo Perico. I made a video showing why you don't need to um buy GTA Plus. Why you can just do Cayo Perico. And um, uh, this might be, you know, Rockstar's response to me and a bunch of other YouTubers, you know, showing people how to do Cayo Perico, uh, and uh, they're pissed off people aren't buying shark cards as much. So that's, you know, that's just my reasoning for it. I wish that people in GTA Online would play like this, but, you know, we, don't, we never see this, this. We always see a press remark, too. Um, but that's enough me ranting about Cayo Perico. That's my thoughts on it. I think it's stupid. I think it's a bad decision, and um, uh, I think Rockstar needs to change that pronto. Um, boost for organization and MC members. Bodyguards, associates, and MC members will earn substantially more GTA uh, money for joining and participating in organization and motorcycle club activities. When you're not busy running your own operation, join a friend or fellow to earn big without risking your own stock. Um, 
Now, I really hope that, you know, that the payouts, the, the, the pay every, like every day the CEOs get paid. I think it's like, is it like every, every 15 or 10 minutes they get paid? It's something like that. And MC members, they don't get that same payout, but they do get paid for contracts, uh, MC contracts, and they do get paid for helping sales. So hopefully that increases. Baseline salaries for bodyguards, associates, and MC members will be doubled. Okay. Okay. So it is. Um, that's good. Ensuring all players are able to earn GTA money fairly while working for another VIP CEO or MC president. In addition to doubled salaries, MC members will also receive an increased payout for taking part in cell missions. Okay, good. How much is more money is that going to be? But I think that that's going to be good because this is going to encourage people. Now, see, this is what I was talking about. You know, you take a step forward and then you take a step back. This is good. This all right here is good. This is this encourages cooperative play. Increasing the amount of money that players make for helping other players, this encourages cooperative play. Not nerfing the heist for solo players. Literally, if you want to encourage cooperative play in Cayo Perico, make it so that when you do certain approaches together as a team, you might make more money. But don't nerf the people that are doing solo heists already. The people that are doing solos are happy the way it is. If anything, maybe increase the increase the payouts. For if if you have four people, increase the pay, increase the take that more people can take. Keep the solo money the same, but increase the take that four players can take in Cayo Perico. That will encourage cooperative uh, play. If people know that they'll be making a little bit more money now with four players, then yes, they'll be encouraged to do that. Keep the solo the same, but increase payouts for four. Without that, won't be and you won't have to nerf the solo runs on the heist. Um, in addition to double salaries, MC members will also receive an increased payout for taking part in cell missions. Bodyguards and associates will also now receive payouts for participating in cell missions, promptly reflecting their contributions. Hopefully that's good, because CEOs get like $10,000 for helping like sell, and that's, that's ridiculous, so that should be more. Fees uh, related to renaming organizations have also been reduced, okay? First time payout boost. Okay, so this I'm not gonna read this here. This is this is just like this is just like for first time players. So this is like you know if you're playing this the first time executive biker, it's, it's this little bit thing there. Um, with more to come. Thank you again for time to share your valuable feedback with us. We will continue to review your submissions via the GT Online feedback website and look forward to sharing the criminal enterprises with you on July 26th for for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, and PC. Yeah, so um that's basically my reaction to it. You know there is some good news. You know you know. There's more activities to do, you know, MCs and CEOs are paid better, the original heist got a pay boost, Raises got a pay boost, but then Kyle Perico got nerfed. And that's just, it's like I said, you take a step forward and then you take a step back. That's, a, that's exactly what this is. You get some good things, but then you get some bad things along. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm pissed off at the same time. There's some good things coming with this, but then there, there, there's some bad things. But let me know what you guys think on the Kyle Perico heist. Do you agree with me? I think that, I don't think this nerf is ne necessary. I think... It's like I said before, if you want to make the heist more diverse, if you want people to stop using the damn drainage tunnel, then make it so that they get bonuses for different approaches. Make it so that they get an extra amount of money if they go through the gate. Make it so that they get an extra amount of money if they get charges and blow up the gate or make or if they use the key card or if they use the rope. You know, there's just so many things and make an increased payouts for, you know, four people on a heist with more players. And that way, the people that play as teams will be happy and encouraged, encouraged to, to play more cooperative, and the people that are playing solo won't get pissed off. But with this, all you're doing is you're just pissing off people that play solo, because I have seen so many comments. And do you guys know, last thing I'll wrap up this video, the last thing that, that I will wrap up this video, whenever I made money guides, because I used to make so many money guides back in the day, I made so many money guides for GT Online. Do you know what my number one most asked question on my money guides was? Out of all the money guides I've made, the most number one asked question that I got was, can you do this solo? That is literally the number one um, uh, question that I got on my money guides. Can you do this solo? How can I make money solo? That was literally the, always the number one question on my money guides. Always. All the time. Because peop not everybody has tons of friends to play with. Some people don't even have friends that play GTA at all. They're just stuck playing by themselves. And so people don't want to rely on others. People want to be able to make money on their own time, not have to wait for people to join their MC or CEO, want to be able to do things on their own. That's why businesses like the nightclub business are great, because you can do everything solo. But um, that's pretty much it. So I, I think Rockstar is going to piss off a lot of people with this. But let me know what you think down below. I'm sorry for my little rant here. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, it just... 
it just I, I I it's been hard for me to you know to be happy. I got I got excited yesterday with the update. Everything that I read about the update, almost everything was great, and now I read this and I just get pissed off. So like, uh, let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll have a Red Dead stream up in like an hour, so come by the Red Dead stream. You can ask me even GTA stuff on the Red Dead stream. It, uh, it's fine. Um, uh, if you want to ask me about this or if you want to ask me about the state of Red Dead Online, um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful day.